Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's hey! a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach. Turn up your mind. The president has just told, I don't see how you could believe any differently. The commander in chief has just told the world, Americans, U.S. troops, U.S. military families, none of it matters. It is hard to see how a commander in chief gives that message to the U.S. troops. Remember, there are still hundreds of U.S. troops in very considerable danger inside Syria in a very high threat environment until the Pentagon in the coming days can in fact get them all out of there. Uh, there are a number of hostile parties, the Turks, the Syrians, regime, the Russians, Syrian-backed, uh, Turkish-backed militias tied to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. All these people are moving around the battlefield and there are a decreasing number of U.S. military troops. Very significant challenge to keep them safe until American, the Americans can get out of there. A bit mystifying to me at least why why an American commander in chief didn't start with stay away from our troops, they will be kept safe, don't mess with them. I, I think it's fair to say the Pentagon might have expected a very strong public message from the President of the United States that he has their back a very verbal message that he will see to it that they are all kept safe until they get out of there. I'm not sure I heard those words from the commander in chief. This no, you didn't. This is what you heard. In the meantime, uh, our soldiers are not in harm's way, as they shouldn't be, as two countries fight over land. That has nothing to do with us. And uh, the Kurds are much safer right now, but the How Kurds is that possible? know how to fight. And as I said, they're not angels. They're not angels. If you take a look, you have to go back and take a look. But they fought with us. Uh, we paid a lot of money for them to fight with us, and that's okay. Uh, they did well when they fought with us. They didn't do so well when they didn't fight with us. Uh, when I refused to allow the Americans a year and a half ago to fight with the Kurds against Iraq, I said, wait a minute, this country stupidly just spent a fortune on fighting for, with, around Iraq. Nobody knows how they spent it. No, you don't but know. They spent, actually, we're in the Middle East now for $8 trillion, if you can believe that stupidity. What, 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 what is he, I, this is what the commander in chief, this is the message he told the world today. This is the message he sent to our soldiers. This is the message that he sent to our Air Force, our Marines, our special operators. This is the message he sent to our partners in, uh, you know, uh, rounding up and guarding ISIS, the Kurds. Uh, you know, go fight over land. Uh, you're safer now than you were before. American troops, they're out of harm's way. None of that is true. And, and, you know, when you start lying about war and peace, when you when you find yourself, you know, uh, BS in your way through, you know, how how troops are about to get slaughtered. Uh, I, I, I say it's time you frog march him off the freaking playing field and put him in a prison and let him die in jail. You know, this is this is treason. This is this is actually aiding and abetting a foreign enemy. This is helping Russia. This is helping Syria. This is helping ISIS. This is helping uh, the, the Turkish militias who are al-qaeda i mean it's just the sickest freaking thing and most americans don't know foreign policy at all they just know that they're anti-war which is fine i'm anti-war too which is why we did the right thing by not invading syria when he was murdering his own people but instead looking for trusted partners to train and believe me we auditioned a whole but that's why i keep telling you this whole operation in syria was so well done by our intelligence uh, community that they were there seeking out uh you know uh partners to help in that region so we didn't have to do it so we didn't have to go so europe didn't have to go First, we put together a sanctions regime. We got the European Union. We got all of our NATO allies. We got the Arab League. Everybody in the world pretty much aligned against what Assad was doing. And when that didn't stop him and he gassed his own people, Obama said, 
I'm not sending American troops in there. People mocked him. You said there was a red line. Yeah, he did. But it didn't mean that American troops would go in. It meant that we would look at our intelligence operators and we would say, which of the people that you have scouted out are the best partners to train in this battle? And they said the Kurds. They were invaluable in Iraq and they'll be great in Syria. Uh, all they're going to want is just a little bit of protection in northern Syria when all this is over. Done. And we gave our freaking word. And they did it. And 11,000 of them died and 24,000 of them were wounded. And now we got 1,000 uh, guys that, that were helping them learn our systems and patrol and do other things to, uh, you know, help guard ISIS and help guard the families of ISIS and all that. And the president just decides that, uh, you know, Putin and, and by the way, when all this was going on, Putin was looking for a way out of Syria. Don't you remember that? Putin had had it. He didn't see any way to, he didn't see a path to victory in Syria. He was partnered with Assad the whole time because he wants support in Syria, which he has. And he wanted to keep that. And so now all of a sudden we have a crazy president who turns around and says to Putin, who couldn't see a path forward, I'll give you the whole thing. What the? What is going on, people? What is going on? What has happened in Syria is yet again Donald Trump selling folks out. And in this case, he sold out the Kurds, who, yes, fought with us and thousands died in our fight against ISIS. And let's be clear, what Donald Trump has done because of that phone call with Erdogan mm. is basically giving 10,000 ISIS fighters a get-out-of-jail-free card. Yep. And you know who the winner is in this? Yep. There are four. Russia, Iran, Assad, and ISIS. This is a crisis of Donald Trump's making, and it is on a long list of crises of Donald Trump's making, and that's why do gotta go, and when I am commander-in-chief, we will stop this madness. Uh, so that was uh, Kamala. Now let's listen to Lindsey Graham, okay? This is today. Lindsey Graham uh, was talking to uh, the special representative for Iran, Brian Hook, and uh, he was getting information about our policy in Syria, okay? And, um, oh, no, 32, but 32 is Trump. Uh, yeah. There, yeah. 31 is, is uh, the long one, and then you have 32. Tr oh, I see, okay. All right, Mr. Hook, uh, is Assad a friend of the United States? No. Do you consider him a war criminal? Yes. Okay, do you think is, is he aligned with Iran? Iran has been supporting Assad Without over Iran the last eight years. helping Assad, the last he would eight not years. be around because Hezbollah came to his aid when nobody else would. You agree with that? Hezbollah. Yes, I Iran was an early good, supporter of Assad. Yeah, I, well, Russia and Iran keep Assad functioning. Uh, yeah, you're a good man. You're a good choice for this. So my questions are really not about you and your policies, it's about this president's policies. I could not agree with more with Senator Markey. This is the most screwed up decision I've seen since I've been in Congress. When the president said today, Syria, the invasion of Turkey, uh, uh, the, Turkey's invasion of Syria is really of no consequence to us. Do you know why we sanctioned Turkey, if that's true, Mr. Right. Hook? Um, <clears throat> the president did th um, threaten sanctions on Friday and has imposed some yeah. of them on Monday. And, and I cheered them on. Um, I don't know how in the world Pompeo and Pence bring an end to the bloodshed before they leave the president Syria. If Syria wants to fight for their land, that's up to Turkey and Syria. So I view the situation on the Turkish border with Syria to be, for the United States, strategically brilliant. I don't see anything brilliant about this. <laughs> Do you believe the Kurds are safer today than they were before Turkey's invasion? That's a question for Ambassador Jeffrey. Okay. I understand there's well, a member briefing I happening. Understand. I'm yeah. the special representative for uh, Iran. Fair enough, fair enough. And I can answer the Iran questions on Syria, okay, but... fair enough. Okay, Do you see Iran moving in to take the oil fields in Syria if we withdraw all of our forces? Hmm. I have not seen any intelligence on that yet, but that doesn't... Do so you that, think that would be a logical move for uh, Iran if America abandons Syria? Iran's interests in Syria are mostly around supporting Assad and creating a strategic Well, if the oil fields are there for the taking and we leave, 
What's the likelihood that Iran would go in and would it matter? That's not something which I'm at liberty to speculate on. Okay. I, well, I, I'll, I'll I, speculate. Iran is massing at the borders, I speak. If we withdraw all of our forces and abandon the oil fields, Iran will surely go in and seize the oil fields. It will undercut the maximum pressure campaign, and our friends in Israel will be in a world of hurt. Do you agree with this? If Iran gets stronger in Syria, it's to the detriment of Israel. Yes. And there you have it. <laughs> Why is the president doing the bidding of Russia, Iran, Bashar al-Assad, and Turkey? Why is he creating a block of power like that? Somebody's going to have to bring up this word bribery. RandyRoads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.